In this lesson, we're going to be talking about leg length discrepancies, which give rise to something that's pretty high yield, known as a short leg. A short leg, as the name implies, refers to the lower extremity distance being different from top to bottom when you compare both lower extremities. So as you can see in this example, if you were to measure both of these lower extremities from the top black line to the bottom black line, you would notice that there is a short leg on the left and there's a discrepancy in the total measurement. Now when we talk about short legs, there are actually two types of short legs. There's a functional short leg or an anatomical short leg. The functional short leg refers to a short leg that is structurally intact. And what that means is that all of the bones measure what they're supposed to measure and they're in the right place. But even despite that, there's a short leg on one side. And as such, this is usually due to environmental causes or somatic dysfunction. So over time, if somebody has somatic dysfunction in one of their legs, perhaps even in their sacrum or their pelvis, this can cause a leg length discrepancy. But because it's somatic dysfunction, the bones themselves, the musculoskeletal architecture is structurally intact. Now let's compare that to anatomical short legs. In an anatomical short leg, the bones and the musculoskeletal architecture is structurally dysfunctional. And this is usually a congenital issue. Not always, but usually. So as you might imagine, if you happen to be born with a femur that's longer on one side than the other, that will cause a short leg. Now the most common type of functional short leg is a hip replacement. And as you might imagine, if somebody has an artificial joint put into their hip, this is going to alter the normal mechanics of the hip extending down through the lower extremity. And when you compare both sides, one leg to the other, one will be shorter. So it's very high yield to know that the most common type of functional short leg or the most common cause of a functional short leg is a hip replacement. Now, something that's really important to point out is that the cause of an anatomical short leg can be length discrepancy at any point in the lower extremity. So for example, it could be that the femur is longer on one side. It could be that the fibula is shorter on one side. It could be that the foot has more bone depth on one side. Really the point I'm making here is that any bone or any musculoskeletal architecture in the lower extremities period can be the reason that you have a short leg. Now let's talk about findings. When you have a short leg, there are certain things that you should be looking for. And these are the types of diagnostics or symptoms that test writers will give you in the vignette when you're taking Comlex, when you're taking your in-class exams. So you wanna recognize these things and start to think, okay, now that I know what finding I'm being given, is there a short leg? And if so, what side is it on? The first thing that they'll give you is discrepancy of landmarks. So when somebody is performing an osteopathic structural exam, or maybe you're even doing it in the lab component of your OMM class, you wanna look for discrepancies between the trochanters, the iliac crests, the malleoli, specifically the medial malleolus, the shoulders, etc. And these types of discrepancies tell you that side to side there's imbalance. The next thing you wanna remember is that there's going to be somatic dysfunction in the lumbar spine. The classic finding is side bending away and rotating towards the side of the short leg. This is very, very high yield. SART for short, S-A-R-T, side bend away, rotate toward. A very high yield example of something you might be asked is that they'll give you a whole array of different findings. So they'll say things about the cervical spine, the thoracic spine, the lumbar spine, the sacrum, etc. You'll be given a list of osteopathic structural exam findings. And you'll be thinking that they're going to ask you some question about somatic dysfunction. And what they're actually going to ask you for is, is there a short leg or what might you expect to find? And how that question works is that you need to look at that, recognize that they're side bending away and rotating towards in the lumbar spine and then deduce or infer that there is a short leg on one side. So it's very, very high yield. Don't overlook that finding. The next finding that you'll see is sacral base on leveling. This will make a lot more sense if you've gone through the section on sacral somatic dysfunction, but on the side of the short leg, you'll see ipsilateral sacral base on leveling. 
As far as clinical symptoms, the most common presentation of a short leg is low back pain. And lastly, and probably most high yield, there's going to be somatic dysfunction of the anominates. Now don't worry if you haven't gone through the anominate section in this course yet, because this will make more sense once you do. But for now, we need to talk about which direction are the anominates going to rotate. Now that direction depends entirely on whether or not the short leg is an anatomical short leg or a functional short leg. And unfortunately, a lot of the resources that medical students are using to learn OMM and to study OMM really fail to make this distinction, and the distinction is incredibly important to make. So if you have a functional short leg, the clinical finding or the, the somatic dysfunction in the innominate will be an anterior innominate rotation. But if the short leg is an anatomical short leg, then the finding that you'll be given in the innominate will be a posterior innominate rotation. And I really can't stress enough how high yield and important this distinction is. Because again, a lot of different resources contrast each other. Some say that there's always going to be anterior innominate rotation in a short leg, and others say that there's always going to be posterior innominate rotation in a short leg. So if you're sitting there studying with your friends, you're going to have different information, you're going to be arguing with each other, and you'll probably end up getting the question wrong because there's no consensus for which direction the innominate is rotating. So what I want you to take away from this conversation is that the question has to tell you whether it's functional or anatomical. Otherwise, there's no way that you can guess whether it's anteriorly rotated or posteriorly rotated. Now the question then becomes, what do I do or what answer do I pick if they don't specify whether the short leg is functional or anatomical? And what I would recommend in those cases is you look at the vignette and you try to decide whether or not it's likely that the short leg is functional or anatomical and then guess based on that. So if you're dealing with a very young patient, chances are we're talking about something anatomical. They may have been born with some congenital cause of a short leg. But if we're talking about a 70-year-old obese woman, Maybe she has degenerative joint disease, maybe she got a hip replacement, maybe she has a functional short leg. So you want to use the clues in the question to figure out whether it might be functional or anatomical if they don't tell you. But bottom line here, and I'm going to repeat myself one more time because I'm so tired of other resources not getting this distinction correct. It depends whether it's functional or anatomical what the anonymate will do. So it's going to be anterior and functional posterior and anatomical. Don't forget that. Let's wrap up this conversation by talking about how we treat short legs. The treatment is always going to be heel lift. So you go on the side of the short leg and you insert a heel lift to try to even out the discrepancy and reduce that discrepancy. Now, there are a lot of different ways that people memorize the different measurements for how much heel lift you can give. And I want to simplify this because this is not something that you should be wasting brain space with. So how I want you to approach this is it depends if your patient is old and fragile or young and strong. Old and fragile patients can get 1 16th inch every two weeks. Young and strong patients can get 1 8th inch every two weeks. And just know that the maximum heel lift that you can do is 1 half inch every two weeks. Don't worry about any other details other than what you see on this slide. This is the most simple way to approach this topic. This is the treatment for heel lifts.